Just you just start recording and oh you are recording. All right, go. Okay, so a passage today we're gonna talk about school shooting awareness and I'm gonna read you a passage from Columbine's article, um, uh, Eric Harris's journal. This was the last entry he wrote. He wrote, "No, no, no, don't let that weird Eric kid come along." So this kid was bullied and messed with, and he was pushed to the point where he committed a school shooting. So. Just wanted to share that interesting piece of information with you. And um, 90% of kids who have committed a school shooting are bullied. 59% uh, of victims are aged 10 to 19, 10 to 19, and 69% of shooters are the age of 10 to 19. 10 to 19. So, which likelihood means that most people are middle school age and high school age. So are committed to do this, which means our school, even though we might not think, I mean, you have amazing security out here, we might not think of an inside school shooting from a student. Like, you can prevent it. We found that there is hints. They write in journals. They do books. They have tortured pasts. They're bullied. What we want you to do is we want you to look for things like that. And there, we also want you to look out, this is kind of mean, but we want you to look out and, I don't know how to say this right, but look out and point out maybe some who look like threats that could ever happen to something like that. And then take threats seriously. Because uh, I remember reading another Columbine thing is he made multiple threats to do the thing and no one saw it or took it seriously. And what ended up is he actually did it, and the teachers never thought he'd do it. And what happened? And then look out for bullying the hall. Another Columbine article, I'm referencing this a lot, is um, the kids would squirt ketchup packets on him at lunch, and the teachers just stood there and watched. It's absolutely horrible. And then you have amazing outside security. I know a guy, I heard a story of how a guy walked by the window in one of the, by one of the classrooms, and you almost almost spark like a security system, whatever. Yeah. Um, our goals are to raise awareness and to find efficient ways to stop it. Um, we're saying that it can happen anywhere, even in this WSR school, and we have to look out for the clues and hints that someone could do such a thing. Uh, we are trying to teach people what to do if there are any acts of these violence to shut them down before anyone gets hurt. Remember, it's mostly the bullied ones, but sometimes it can be anyone, so we hope you're aware. And I know there was actually a school shooting prevention in, um, there was a town, I don't know if it was Iowa, it probably wasn't, but there's, they prevented it, they took the threat seriously, took out the bombs that he was threatening, used Columbine as an influence, but they stopped him because they took threat seriously and did all these things. We're not asking you to donate to any of these organizations. These are just charities we want to give you for more information if you're looking. These are two very good charities we found, and they're both against violence. Any questions? Yeah, so do you think we're addressing these concerns at all? Uh, I think in small ways, because you don't, you don't realize what's happening until it happens. You don't realize if you've had enough precaution and do it until it happens. Okay, so. so. But you are putting a lot of, like with the school shooting drills, I completely compliment that because that's really good. But there's still some inside things like, like guns and backpacks. Like, how would we find those if that ever happened? It'd have to be a reliable student to find it or do that. And if. They do plan threats. We'd have to report to the authorities and stuff like that. So you think students feel comfortable in telling administration or a teacher that if somebody shows them a gun or a weapon that they would tell us? Yes, I, 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 yes, I, I think, think that would. So that hopefully is addressing one of the things you said. Yes. Is to like take it seriously. So mm -hmm. I agree. I hope that's the I, case. I would. That kids would feel comfortable saying that. So I agree. That's one thing. And I, an awareness thing. Um, the, the recent safety drill that we had, the intruder drill, mm -hmm. um, that's in direct reference to this, um, the, the 
training that happened during safety day or yeah, day, I heard about that. Um, that's being taken into consideration. Alice training for faculty and staff is the mm -hmm. same thing. So you have been preparing a lot for this. Trying, um, yeah. but it also is taking threats seriously. Students have to have to speak up if they feel somebody is being bullied, or if you yourself feel yes. bullied, you have to be comfortable to talk to Mr. Seward, the counselor, or to a principal, whether it's me or some other person in the high school, because eventually you'll have strangers who you'll have to learn how to trust, um, because they're not as nice as I am. Cool. Um, and that kind of thing, but looking for a caring adult, you know, whether it be your classroom teacher or even telling your parents. Yeah. Um, we can always get better. Um, I think in, it was Wasika, Wisconsin, where the yeah, that's where. Columbine copycat was, and he was well planned out. Yeah, um, Will Dix many hits. said that so that's his mom's old school. Town. Yeah, and yeah. Um, he had it written in notebooks, and he had the bombs already planted in, like, school, like, oh. lunchboxes. He tested them. On the playground. Yeah, he tested them on the playground. In the snow, like, for sure. Sort of like, I don't know. He tested them, but nobody found them until later on. That's yeah. Yeah. So he had him planted and he was just waiting for the attack. Yeah, supposedly um, that he was going to do it on, on the 20th because that was the anniversary of Columbine, but that fell on Easter and so he didn't want to do it on Easter for whatever reason. And so he's slated to have it happen later and then in the meantime somebody caught him messing around storage units and thought he was breaking and entering. And, um, that's what. That's actually exactly what happened to Columbine. They were going to plan it um, on the anniversary of the the 10th or 5th anniversary of the Oklahoma City oh, bombings. Okay. But then they decided to. It, their plan wasn't ready. Like they didn't have all of the supplies yet, so they had to push it back a bit. So do you think kids are better prepared now than they would have been three years ago? Yes. Yeah, I think tons more. I think it's more prepared. Like. We are actually taking it more seriously. Yeah, do you think you'll ever be completely prepared? No. No. You no. can't. There will always be people who find a way around. We're never perfect. Yeah. And the thing is, is you never know exactly how you're going to react in a situation like that. And you never know exactly what they're going to do. Right. Everybody, but you do the best you can with the information you yeah. give us. But yeah, it does. Um, part of it is a relationship. The kids have a relationship with a teacher that they can talk to. The kids have relationships with each other that they can be in confidence with the kid, you know, like a friend, and tell them their woes. And then the friend actually makes the report. I think, actually, that kids know when to stop messing around, and I think they know when they have to... For the most part, but if you're the, if you're the victim, if you're yeah. the bullied person... Yeah. You know, you can tell somebody to stop, but there have been a couple instances, even this school year, I've had to tell their friends, hey, they don't like it. You know, and then they said, well, we're just joking around. I said, well, they told you to stop. They don't like it. You need to stop. Yeah. So sometimes, even though all the kids know, they don't necessarily stop like they need to um, until an adult kind of steps in. But I'm grateful that the kids have said, I don't like it, I need help, you know, and then they will, or then I take it to the next level. And even then, sometimes that doesn't work. Yeah, and then you still have to be vocal, and you have to be vigilant as far as making sure that the bullies get the message to knock it off. Yeah. Yeah. So hopefully kids feel like we're, we're, we're not perfect, but we're better than we used to be as a district or as a school. You're not getting mean on this call. There you go. Better. It's all on me. Any other questions or comments? Why are you asking that? <laughs> I don't know. I just want to have any questions no, or comments for me. Just here's the sources. All right. Thanks. Thank you for your time. Cut. I can edit that. So. Yeah, please. Thank you for your time, Mr. Wilcox. Uh -huh. Yeah, thanks for your presentation.